for ROP TV. So today I am super excited to be cooking a special cake for you. Just kidding. If you know me, you know that I don't cook. However, today I wanted to share with you, we had so many questions about cooking and um, how do you cook with your wig on? What safety precautions do you take? So today I am at home and you, you have to bear with me today. I'm, I, I have my microphone on. If anything disconnects, if you'll please let me know. I'm by myself today um, because I am at home and I can't have anyone because of our, our um, situation, you know, CDC regulations and I have to be really careful with my family. Um, first of all, I would, I want to just say this is going to be, a, I know there's a lot of videos out there. Let me just start off with that. Everyone has to do what they're comfortable with. So first of all, I'm just going to share what I do whenever I start cooking. Um, and I don't do a lot of cooking. We do a lot of cooking outside right now. So if you, if you want to see what grilling looks like with the wig on, and I know that sounds funny, but it's very realistic. You can go to my personal um, page, which is at Texas Wig Fairy. And if you'll scroll down, maybe a couple weeks ago, you can see what grilling with the wig looks like. Today, I'm going to give you a few... Um, few different options and the reason why it's so important to be careful when you're cooking with with your wig on you you're absolutely good unless you just don't take precautions which is why we're doing this and I know it sounds silly but it's not especially to a, a new wig wearer it's it um it can be uh, they you can get anxiety not knowing what to do so that's why we decided to do this um, and I know that there's other tutorials that are available um, as far as washing, shampooing, um, shampooing excuse me and I want to just direct you to our YouTube channel. Um, make sure that you subscribe, hit the notification button so you always know what's, what's up with um, ROP news. And the other is make sure you follow us on Instagram so that you know of all these fabulous things that we're going to be doing. I'm going to start off with a few questions first because for those of you um, that have sat in some of my classes, you know that we do classes every week. We have classes coming up for you guys. And so the most important thing is I want to go over some basic questions. And I know I do this every time I'm live, but they are they are real questions for wig wearers that honestly just don't know why some of these things happen, why some of the accessories look the way they do. Um, and for us people that have been wearing wigs for a long time, they seem kind of silly. And shouldn't we know this? But we don't. So that's why it's very important for me to go over that information. And before I get started, I just want to remind you, please make sure you visit Abby and Alexander's um, Instagrams and everything that we've done that's down in our feed at Renea Paris because all the information is just so wonderful and so important to all the different communities that we're engaging with. These. So first question is, I had someone call me kind of panicked and they're like, Daniela, my, my wig cap has a hole in it. Okay, so they all have a little hole in it. Let me show you this. Okay, so this is the wig liner. They come in different colors. If you want more information, go back and view some of our, um, our lives that we already have because we've gone over all this. But I'm going to go over the questions because they are important to me. And these are questions that I just recently received. They all have a hole in them. They come in different colors. The hole is there. Because you're going to pull this down all the way down here and we have all that in tutorials so I don't want to demonstrate it now because I have to demonstrate some other things and I want to have, make sure I have time. But this is here so that you can put your hand through if you want to distribute hair. If you have hair that is just um, creating a little bit of bulk and you kind of want to move the hair around, this is what this is good for. That Put your hand back here. It's going to fit on the hairline. And then you can pull this back and you can use just a pin. I don't use a pin. I'll show you in just a minute. Um, but that's question number one. 
Second question is if you're not sure whether your wig is human hair or synthetic, if you're just not sure, what do you shampoo it in? And if I only have synthetic shampoo, am I going to be okay? Okay, as a licensed cosmetologist, I would just say if that's the only option you have right now, um, synthetic shampoo, then, then use the synthetic shampoo. The most important thing is whenever you do purchase something, the individual who sold it to you, um, just nicely ask them. If it's not in a tag back here, whatever, you know, because most of it has a, a tag in the back and it's going to tell you what the fiber is. And if it doesn't, okay, I totally understand. Maybe it's not back there. But if, if the tag is not there and you don't know whether it's, um, let me show you this piece right here. So this says 100% mod acrylic. A human hair piece would say human hair. If it's not back here and you just really don't know, shampoo it with synthetic just so that you're safe because if you use human hair on human hair product on synthetic hair, a lot of the products contain more alcohol, so you don't want to do that. And always make sure that it's lukewarm water. If you want the whole tutorial, go to our YouTube channel because we have we have um a tutorial on how to shampoo your pieces. Okay, so and the other the next question is how how do you use the adjustments in the back of a wig? Good question. So if you have not you know I I am really surprised and this is just this is just being completely honest with you guys. Why would I not be honest? Um for those of you who uh, don't know my background, just really quickly so you can understand where these questions come from, I do exactly what a lot of you guys do. I have a wig boutique and I help cut, I help guests every single day try to find their dream hair, uh, whether it's for fashion or medical, medical needs. And so I get questions every single day and I work with guests all day, every day. And so some of these questions I, I sometimes think, okay, when I'm teaching a class and they've purchased a piece elsewhere, um, I understand, you know, a lot of times we're busy, we don't have time to go over that information, but a lot of times we have people that don't even know the adjustments are here. So this is a halo. This is the adjustment back here. And if you take those adjustments and move them towards the center on each side, you're going to kind of just take it and move it like this. Oops, move it in. If you do this on both sides, it's going to make it smaller fitting. It's going to fit tighter. If you let them out to the right and the left, it's going to make it larger. So these do have a purpose. Okay, these are your adjustments. And every piece that we have has adjustments. Let me show you just so you'll understand that all the pieces have adjustments in the back. Here's Angelica, she has adjustments in the back. Okay, I know you guys are just waiting for me to cook for you. Okay, so next question that I'm gonna go ahead and get started with today. Today I'm gonna show you how, how to be careful in the kitchen whenever you are wearing something to cook in. And the most important thing, um, as we get started is if you have an older piece, uh, you know, one of your, if you only have one wig, I totally understand. If you have a couple wigs, then why don't you choose something that is a little bit older, not brand new or not really long. If you like Angelica, and I'm going to demonstrate that, I'm going to show you just a few quick tips to just go ahead and tie it up while you pull something out of the oven and then you can drop your beautiful hair down. Okay, so do you wash your wig? Oh, this is another question that I know, I know it sounds, it just sounds silly, but I'm, I kid you not, I get this, I get this several times a week. Do you shampoo your wig on you, or do you take it off? You know, I never thought about it, but it, it would kind of make sense if you're wearing it, if you could, if you would, I guess, think it would be okay to shampoo it while you're wearing it, but I would highly suggest for you not to be wearing it. 
Um, you want to take your wig off and you want to shampoo it in a basin, like in a sink or a little, a plastic, um, a little tub. And I'm not, I'm, I'm at home today, so please keep in mind, I'm limited on all my supplies. But like I said, go to our YouTube channel and we have a tutorial on how to wash your wigs and what products are best to use for them. Okay, so for those of you that have just joined, I'm just going to show you some tips today on how to be really careful in the kitchen whenever you're wearing wigs to cook in. Meaning when you open the oven door, when you're steaming, if you're pouring something out, if you're boiling something, you do have to be really, really careful because you can singe the front or it can melt. It can get really, really hot. And so if, you're, if you have a style that gets really, really hot, it's like the steam when it hits it, it may straighten the style. Um, and if and if it just hits you like if that burst of air hits you in the front here It's gonna singe it meaning it's gonna frizz So for those of you that have that have just started wearing wigs this year as we get into the holidays It's really really important and we get this question every week in our salons and our boutiques and on, on online every every different um Every different place where we are helping customers find their dream hair, we get the questions. So that's why I'm going over them. Okay, so first of all, I'm going to show you. If if I was going to be cooking um, of any time, this is what I usually wear. I wear shorter hair. If I am going to be doing a lot in the kitchen, going from the oven to steaming back to the oven, and I'm going to show you that in just a minute. Um, there's a few options that you have if you haven't if you don't have anything shorter I don't know if you've seen a halo but if I'm gonna have if I have a lot of cooking to do which is not that often I'm gonna wear like a little halo and if you don't have one of these if you haven't tried a halo you have to just look into these So this is what I wear if I'm going to be like if I'm going to be out and about and um, we're going to be grilling, we're going to be cooking and I know that we're going to have a lot going on where I have to be really careful. This is what I'm going to be wearing. So this is just a halo that way I don't have to worry about hair falling in my face or having to pull it back. So just keep in mind this is one of our halos and this is just a little cap. This is a nice option if you don't, if you have one of these and you've never thought of just wearing it whenever you're cooking. Now, whenever your guests are already over, you know, over, if you think that you're just not going to have the time to be changing it and putting it up and putting it down and clipping it up, then you could just always start off with something that's in a nice messy bun. This is Angelica. I actually, I just keep this girl like styled up like this. She's, I want her to look messy. I want them to just think, you know, I want them to think I've been doing some serious cooking in that kitchen when we know I haven't. But it just stays like this, ready to go. And this is just a little ponytail holder and a clip. So if you know that you're gonna be doing a lot of cooking, when you're bending over, opening the oven door, throw it up in an up to. Okay, so if you want to be, and I understand, if you want, if you want just long, luxurious tresses hanging, I get it. I get it. If Mr. Big was here, I would want my long hair on too. Okay, so I'm going to show you. What I do if I have everyone over and I'm I just want to be looking great and cooking at the same time first of all I'm gonna just take the front here for the sake of not having it fall in my face I'm gonna demonstrate why I put why you would want to do this whenever you're cooking okay so keep in mind I'm by myself today I don't have anyone to help me with my props here Okay, so let's just make it like realistic. 
So you're gonna see the, the camera move as we turn into the kitchen, please. So bear with me. Okay, steam. We've got some serious steam going on. I'm gonna try to adjust the camera so that you can see the oven, which is down here. And we've got steam here. So I'm gonna show you, bear with me please. Okay, so the reason that I would be clipping my hair up is when, you, when you're doing this and you're opening the steam, you're lifting the, the top off the steam here, this hitting you directly will singe the front and melt the sides. The other is same thing if you're opening the oven and you're getting something out. When you first open it, if you're going to open it, you need to open it and move to the side let that first burst of hot air come out hi you guys for those of you that have just joined us we're going over tips on how to cook for the holidays wearing your wig okay so as i am opening this all this is in my face so what i suggest is take your little clip and for the sake of just getting things out of the oven keeping your hair protected this is just seconds, ladies, so you're still going to look glamorous. But let's do this again as we prepare. Okay, so now I'm going to open the oven door. I'm going to let that, that burst of hot air out first. Then I'm going to get out whatever I'm cooking. And uh, I would show you, but I don't have enough to share. Okay, so I'm going to go over that again. We've got really hot oven. We're gonna open the oven door. We're gonna step away. Then we're gonna step back in and get whatever we're getting out of the oven. That's the most important and I, I found, I mean here we have an oven that you open down. Same thing if the oven, oven was higher, you wanna open the oven door, let that first burst of hot air out, then you want to get out whatever you're getting out. Okay, so I want to show you in this steaming something, same thing. I want, to, I want you to see how much steam comes up. And if you were just hovered over this and the steam hits you, not good. So what we're going to do is we're going to allow the steam, we're going to open it. And we're going to let all the steam out first. Then... You want to get out whatever, let me turn this down. That has plenty of steam, but what I wanted to show you is when you're getting this and you're pouring, you're not going to pour directly and hover over it, you're going to pour it to the side. Let me see if I can show you that. I'm gonna turn this down a little bit. So it's it's interesting, you know, a lot of times we think these questions are silly questions or we're nervous because we're doing something that we've not, never done before. But it's very, very important to keep in mind that you're gonna steam and pour away from you. So I hope that's, I hope that's helpful whenever you're thinking of um, cooking for the holidays and then you can just drop your hair down again. It's that quick and that simple. Okay, so um, for those of you that have just joined, we, we showed a few tips on how to pull your hair back. You could also just kind of pull it to the side here. The important thing is just to kind of have it clipped and not hanging so that when you open the oven door or you're steaming, it doesn't directly 
the steam doesn't directly hit you or the heat when you open the oven door doesn't directly hit you. So um, hopefully that's helpful for those of you that um, sent so many questions about where, will your hair mess up? Do we have to be careful when we're cooking with something? Um, please keep in mind, like I said, if it hits you directly, if the steam hits you directly, it can singe the front. It can singe all the front here. And you definitely don't want to be using your most beautiful pieces and then um, have that kind of accident. So um, let me show you what we were, what I was working so hard on. You can come over if you want. Okay, so I don't know how to cook that much, but you know, I know how to cook a little bit. Make sure please that if you are new to Renee Paris, if you're a wig wearer, a new wig wearer, and you're new to Renee Paris and you don't know exactly um, how to navigate finding your piece, make sure you go to reneeparis.com and enter your enter your information in the locator. Or I, everyone is always so kind to help you with that information. So if you actually get through, someone will be more than glad to give you information on who's closest to you in your area. So again, I just want to thank you. I hope this information was helpful to you because I know during the holidays, it's really, really important to get those questions answered as it is all year. But make sure um, that if you have any other questions, you make sure to send those DMs because we do check those on a daily basis. And as you see, every time we go live, we do answer them.